So, one thing I did forget to mention about the whole learning experience was I also learned that no matter how low on the chart you are, even if I'm the lowest tank, I can still contribute. And a lot of people seem to forget that. There is still ways you can contribute and help. Be it from just spotting people, to tracking people so other people can get around them, to just launching HE at people and trying to damage weapon systems. I mean, anything is possible. And I see a lot of people discounting themselves before they even try. And that makes a huge difference when you're not, when you just automatically give up. And that's something you should never do. Because, I mean, as you've seen in two of my videos now, I've taken a VK2801 from the bottom of the barrel to having some of the most kills on the field. And that's, that's just incredible that you're able to do that sort of stuff when typically a lot of people be like, oh, I'm, I'm the lowest tank here, I'm not going to do anything. And I mean... I'm struggling right now through the uh, the new SU-100M, and that thing's rough, but, and I mean, I've rarely gotten placed against tanks that I can actually penetrate and be able to take care of, but I still do stuff. I either target weak points, make sure that I'm going against targets I know I can hit, or I switch to HE, or just track them so that other tanks can be able to get around people or whatnot else. There's always something you can do. Don't ever discount yourself, and if worse comes to worse and you're on the bottom, just ask some of the top players, how can I assist you? Or ask your, your even ask your artillery, where do you want me to spot? Because I will not be able to penetrate anything. I will spot and, and track people. You tell me where. And that makes all the difference in the world. So being an intelligent player, being a willing, helping teammate, all the difference in the world. So... Anyway, enough about what I've learned over the course of this game, and how about we look at the uh, into the crystal ball as to see what the future holds for World of Tanks. And I mean, this is coming from other sources, so take it with a little grain of salt, but it is a pretty pretty reliable source known as Wargaming. So, I've got the, mo the gist of it all down, but things of note is that 8.0 was the release of physics and Russian tank destroyers. So we know those are out, and we know that stuff will be tweaked every patch, we know that things will be worked out, and that eventually stuff will get ironed out, new tanks will be downgraded a little bit, old tanks will be upgraded a little bit, and we'll see where things will end up fitting in. Just like the, uh, what is that thing called, the Panzer IV. That thing got a little downgraded, but it fits perfectly in its tier now, as opposed to being a little overpowered with that L70. So... What does 8.1 hold? 8.1 holds the British Commonwealth vehicles. And not all of them, it's going to be primarily the heavies and the medium tanks. So you're going to see things like a Churchill or maybe a Firefly. Who knows if they'll bring the Sherman in, but probably like the Challenger and stuff like that will also be in there. So those will be things to look out for, and I'm sure there'll be all sorts of, uh, as we like to call them, napkin tanks, which are, you know, designer ideas were on a napkin and thus it's a tank but you know you got to come up with these random tiers somehow one way or another so those will be the next patch the mediums and heavies of the british so that'll be fun to see all that and that'll open up yet another tank tree i'm going to have to learn and deal with and have to work with and i'm thinking that the british they're probably going to fit somewhere along the lines of the americans where they're fast moving tanks with uh accurate are, well, mildly accurate, decent penetration, decent hitting guns. It's not going to be the heavy hitters like the Soviets, and it's not going to be the crazy accurate and crazy armored um, Germans. It's going to be primarily somewhere in between. A nice little uh, speedy tank sort of layout is what I'm gathering from what it, I'm thinking they should be. At least historically, that's typically what they will be. Fast firing, fast moving. So... From there, 8.2 will probably, I could be wrong on this one, but I'm willing to wager that it's going to be the German TDs. They're bringing in a new line of German tank destroyers, probably going to take advantage of that Jag Panzer or Jag Panther 2 to try and uh, weave in another tank line or tank destroyer line to match up with the Germans. So I'm not sure what they're going to do there. Probably that uh, Stug 100 is going to be one of them. I forgot what the actual name is, but I, I know it as the Stug 100 that was projected to be the Tier 10 until they made it the uh, Jagdpanzer E100. So that'll be interesting if that comes true. And then from there, 8.3 will introduce the 
other Commonwealth TDs and SPGs. So that's where you'll see something like the Achilles or the British version of the M10, or you'll see a lot of priests with different options like a 25 pounder and just different sorts of, uh, the basically slight variations on the American things that they'll probably now have in the British Commonwealth variation. And again, probably a lot of uh, fast moving, fast firing sorts of things. And of course, lots of uh, lots of already established American things, I'd imagine, because it's it's kind of how the war went. Was it just went to a sort of a um, lend lease sort of thing while the British developed and added on their own aspects. From there. Let's see what else we have. 8.4. I'm not too sure about what would come in on 8.4. Maybe more French things. Maybe another... Um, well, I think the Soviets, Americans, and Germans would all be caught up there with two TD lines. So probably another line for the French. They seem to not have the variety that the, the rest have. So that would be my guess is 8.4 would fill in that sort of gap. And then finally, at 8.5, the furthest ahead I can even begin to imagine, and which, and the sources that I've seen have stated, is that the rest of the Commonwealth things will be added. So perhaps a second TD line, maybe a little bit of a uh, variations in heavies and mediums, a second medium and heavy line, that sort of thing. So a little bit of filler here and there, and we'll see what else comes in. So something to look forward to is slight additions of new stuff as well as additions of just the typical um, the missing elements like the Germans how they don't have the second TD line and maybe a little bit of filler like I imagine that everything is going to get a little bit of filler to kind of catch up like the Germans have quite a lot of mediums and heavies where the Americans and the Soviets are just starting to catch up so I'd imagine that the French will get filled in the Soviets and the Americans will be uh, all caught up and the Germans will catch up with their TDs and then you'll probably see the British stuff hit next and then from there I think at that point you'll probably start seeing the introduction of World of Warplanes and World of Battleships because I do not really think there's too many other major forces you'll see they might introduce like a minor Axis army because you'll have to include things like the Italians and the Romanians and the Hungarians and the Finnish so you'll see lots of like other uh, Axis things be probably lumped into one I could see that happening and then other allied forces trying to think of what there would be because a lot of your Commonwealth stuff includes like the 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 Indian forces and the Australian forces so as for yeah, I really can't think of many other tanks that could branch down. Just the other Axis, the minor Axis powers would be the next one I could come up with. But that would also be my goldfish memory, making me forget what other options there are. So don't don't sort of uh, rely on that logic there. So, things to look forward to. And then, of course, like I said, we have World of Warplanes and World of Battleships. Now... Flight sims don't particularly speak to me, and that's just a personal choice, so probably will not get into World of Warplanes. It's just, those sorts of things, just, I don't enjoy flight sims. The whole Z-axis starts to uh, starts to confuse me a little bit. And just in general, I, I've played a little of the beta, and it just didn't, didn't speak to me in terms of something I like and want to do. So... That I will leave for somebody else. They can take the reins of a Let's Play. But World of Battleships will definitely be something I get into. Expect that to come my way the moment I get my hands on it. And I will definitely be all for playing World of Battleships. And continuing on, of course, in my World of Tanks stuff here. That's not going away anytime soon. So, hopefully, as now I'm going to enter into a awesome dogfight against a 48 over here we're going to see a little bit of additions of things maybe even eventually you'll see us start to get into the higher tiers like a a tier 
12 or even tier 11, 12, and 13 sort of heavies so that they can counteract the craziness that is the new uh, TDs. So I think those will also be coming down the line shortly that I completely forgot about until now. Because I remember them mentioning that you're going to see up to tier 10 SPGs. So you might see like Katyushas or um, what are they called? Sturm Tigers. Things like that might eventually work their way into the game one way or another. And then you'll start seeing your tier 10 heavy, or tier 10 heavies, tier 10 plus, for lack of better terms, because I don't know up to what tiers they will be, heavies that can withstand all the bombardments and the shelling from the tier 10 TDs and be able to actually resume the strength that the tier 10 heavies were when only tier 9 mediums and TDs existed. So, yeah, I'm going to do a lot of ricochets, by the way, just to, just to forewarn you that, uh, yeah, patents against the nicely angled 48 over here, it, it just ain't gonna happen. So, lucky shot aside, which was that. And of course, I can only dog out now. I can't take another hit. And that mouse is just going to kind of hang out and leave me to dog against him. But, anywho. So, you know, speed it up. <laughs> that was not the speed up button I was looking for. <laughs> there we go. Double the speed because it's going to uh, be a while of me bouncing back and forth. And, oh, there we go. So, he eventually gets splashed. So yeah, I will now move into one final little uh, piece here where I'll talk about the future of my series and ideas. Let's get this show on the road. So something of note is I did take everyone's suggestion to move back to the 152 on the uh, ISU. The 122 just wasn't cutting it. I mean, in this battle, yeah, it probably could, but there's too many times where I'm facing 8s, 9s, and 10s as opposed to... What is this, 5, 6s, 7s, and 8s? So, went back to the 152 just because it's more consistent damage. And even when I am fighting the lower tier stuff, I, if I get close enough, typically I could just one-shot them. And I've done that plenty of times where I've just come up to like a T43 or a uh, uh, Easy 8 and put one, or a Tiger even, and put one right through the side and done max damage and one-shot it then. So... Definitely something I always do is I do read the comments and the messages and everything that everybody sends me. I just typically don't have the time to respond because I, that would take a long time to be able to do. So I do what I can and I respond to like the important things or if I like have the chance to actually sit down and respond back, I will. But I mean the quickest and easiest way is probably to PM me either on Facebook, Twitter, or What's the other one? <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, or um, in uh, YouTube itself. And typically I can get back to you at a relatively decent time. Sometimes it takes me a couple days. But, I mean, in-game a lot of people keep asking me to platoon with them. And I just legitimately don't have the time because I have to balance out doing my doubles and recording. And then, of course, having a social life and, you know, doing all this other stuff I want to do. So... The times that I typically platoon with people are when I do the um, the live streams. I'll either platoon or do company battles so I can get more people involved all at one shot as opposed to the random one or two here and there. So if I don't respond to you, I do at least typically read what you say. And if it's like important enough and big enough, I might address it. Or I might just take it into consideration and stuff. So, yeah. Anywho. Now, as to like the future of my stuff... Well... I might as well, as I've been hinting at it forever and a half, what I want to do, and I'm going to challenge myself to do this, I hope I can do it, and I'm going to make it a challenge so that I can, and I really hope I stick to this, is that I want to go back to what I said a while ago, and after video 100, which I'll get to that in a minute, I want to be able to do a sort of... Um, like a look at each individual tank. I know a lot of people loved the garage review that I did where I covered every tank in brief. But instead of covering every tank in brief, I want to do like, you know, a 5 to 10 minute video per tank. I'd love it to be upwards of 10 minutes, but just purely based on the content and time required and research and everything else, I might only get like a 5 minute to, for lack of better terms, to compare it to something else, if anyone's familiar with COD, 
COD is in not the fish, the uh, the game Call of Duty, and um, Xbox Ahoy in his Weapon Guide series, similar to how he does stuff, but for the tanks in this game. I think that would be a great format. A lot of people would learn stuff, and I'd address it based on the patch at that time. I'd probably have to somehow fit in what patch it is, probably somewhere, I'm sure it's displayed actually, in the garage. And so that way people would know as to which patch I'm talking about, because I know a lot of people are sometimes go back to my videos and they make comments like, oh, well, this happened, and this happened. It's like, yeah, well, that was a different patch. So I, I definitely want to cover tanks one at a time, spend a little more time, address like this tank's good at this role, it's best suited out with this gear, and here's how I prefer to play it and what I think works for me. Here's the play style I liked, etc., etc. So I want to kind of do that sort of thing. And I think what I want to do is kind of record like... Oh, how do I want to do it? I want to do something like I record five or so... At a minimum, a minimum of five battles. Just straight battles. Doesn't matter what the outcome is of those battles. Maybe five to ten of that tank. And then I can just snip parts out of it that showcase whatever I'm trying to show. And I mean, be it a win or a loss or whatever, just kind of show it. Obviously, it's not a fast action first person shooter where I can get, you know, 30 kills in a round, and thus that I can just show, like, kill streaks upon kill streaks. Obviously, this is a much slower paced game and a lot more tactical and thinking and everything like that. So, that's kind of what my goal will be is I want to challenge myself. It's not going to be the Let's Play that I'm doing now, but it's going to be an extension thereof. And that's going to be, I know, like I said, a lot of people have been like, hey, when are you going to do a garage review again? That's going to be the gr new garage view. I don't know what I want to call it, I don't know what I want to do, but starting after episode 100, which um, probably after Halloween would, so like November, I'd like to do one a week with a minimum of one every other week. Or a maximum, like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get my terms right here. A minimum spread of time would be one every other week, but I'd like to make it one every week. I think that's my goal, or my, uh, my objective is one every week, my threshold is one every other week, if I wanted to use terms I'm familiar with from work. So, that's what I want to do. So, I know that'll take me quite a few weeks. And eventually I'll probably step it up. But I want to start... I want to try and get into the knack of it at that speed. Just so I can find my footing. I, I would love to do stuff like an awesome intro. I know that I've just gotten into this whole extra thing with the music from uh, Sex Ray Vision. And I want to somehow produce like an intro. But I mean that's something I'm not familiar enough with as to how to do like the fading in and movement and everything of like text and different images and that's something I'd love to learn so I want to try and use evolve that over time to be able to finally make it to some sort of very professional looking thing by the time I hit like tiers seven and above so that's where I want to go with my series and starting November of 2012 that's what I'd like to start doing and of course the nice thing about World of Tanks is it's about hitting that point where there's not much else coming out, so I can cover everything in a quick fashion once I get down the whole process of it. Now, as for the Let's Plays themselves like this, I'll probably slightly pull them back a bit. Probably do again, one a week. Probably do like a 10-15 to 15 minute thing. Try not to go over 20 minutes, because 2-3 to three battles is about 20 or 15 minutes. So try and stick somewhere in that range is what I'm going to do. And so, from there, I'll also keep doing uh, live streams. My goal is do those once a month. That's, like, a minimum thing, is do those once a month, barring, like, major emergencies or anything like that. And so, that's kind of what I want to do. And, of course, like I said, do these Let's Plays, a weekly thing like I'm doing now. So, that's the direction of where I'm heading. I talked about the direction of which I was going from, or where I see World of Tanks going. And hopefully I'll eventually spin uh, World of Battleships in there as well. And hopefully that this game will continue going on being awesome. And I already discussed the whole 
looking back aspect and what I learned and everything else and why I got into this game. So, hopefully that kind of summarized the whole 99 episodes here all into one and kind of showed you my path forward from here on out. I'd love to get into other games as well and start doing series on those. De of course, depending on work and social and everything else because work eats up a lot of time. So I'd love to fit in stuff. I'd love to do something like Minecraft, but that's been done to death. So we'll we'll see what else I somehow weave into this magic. But I want to thank you guys for tuning in to all 99 episodes so far and look forward to episode 100. I want to do something special, just don't know what yet. So that one might be a little longer to develop, but I will see what I can do. And yeah, so guys, thanks for tuning into All 99. I hope that I can bring you so many more and that you look forward to so many more as well. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys on episode 100.